so I want to start at the beginning with Creed, which is strange because I guess we have to start with the original Rocky. Um, obviously, it was a Best Picture winner. It spawned several sequels. Uh, Ryan, when did you first come up with the idea to, to tell the story from Apollo, the, you know, the side of Apollo Creed? And I, I, from what I understand, it's a very personal story to you. Yeah, um, I, I got the idea for it through my relationship with my father. He was a big, big Rocky fan. Uh, and he, he had he got married and had me and my little brothers when he was real young. So, I, like, my fondest memories of my dad were, like, you know, watching these movies with him. And he would get fired up. He would, like, jump up and, and, and you know, start doing push-ups. And, and, and he would, like, you know, in certain scenes he would cry. You know, um, and, and, and my dad was, like, a real tough, strong, strong guy from, from East Oakland. So um, I always knew these movies kind of had a magical effect over, you know, over my dad. You know, so I, so I loved him for that. And, um... You know, every you know we'll, we'll get a VCR. You know what I mean? And we'll get the box set for him on that. And then we we, we could afford a DVD player. We'll get the box set. You know, DVDs, and we'll sit down and watch him. You know, um, on Father's Day and on his birthday. You know, so it kind of became a ritual that I associated with him. And then um, when I was in film school finishing up, my dad got sick. Uh, and he had like a, like a neuromuscular disorder. They 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 were struggling to diagnose, but he basically was losing all of his strength. And uh, you know, seeing seeing him go through that and having to be there to take care of him and and, and uh, it really, you know, really weighed on me, on my heart, and, and, and on my and on my mental. And you know, that was when I came up with the idea to 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 maybe tell a story um, that can motivate my dad to cheer him up, you know, about his hero, you know, and I was similar to this. So that's how I came up with the idea for Creed. The idea of me becoming a filmmaker was 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 the farthest reach in the world. So you know, and and you know, I I got into film school and was doing that. So you know, always in the back of my mind when I when I get hair brand ideas, you know, I figure it's maybe a possibility for for the reality. You don't have anything to lose, you know. <laughs> And Erwin, what was your reaction, I mean, when he brought this to you? I have to imagine over the years, people have pitched you ideas. I try to avoid him for a long, long time, really. Um, and then I saw Fruitvale Station, and then I heard that uh, Sly had met uh, with Ryan and was interested. And uh, I've always trusted uh, Sly's instincts for the last 40 years. So um, I met with uh, uh, Ryan, and uh, I was very taken with his passion and, and his commitment. Wow. Um, and Sylvester, from what I understand, you, you you took a little convincing to get back into the ring? Actually, it was a lot of convincing. Okay. <laughs> because, uh, you know, he was very enthusiastic. He came in, and, and I, after uh, the, the finale of Rocky Babo, I was very happy with the way the series ended, because I didn't think it was ever going to happen. It was probably more difficult to, to get that done, because we're following... Talk about a long shot. Rocky Vibe didn't work. And then 16 years later, I go, I got this idea to follow, <laughs> follow up a film that didn't work. And I got, it's really good. He's a 60 year old fighter. And I, it's, really? Yeah. You're, 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 you're going to wear pajamas in the ring? You're not going to really. And, and I said, no, no, but it's not about boxing. It's, all, it's, it's about curing yourself, it's about um, venting grief. And when that happened, I thought, fine, it was a miracle. It was literally a miracle that it got made and it was done. I was happy with it. And everyone said, fine, peace be it. And I, basically, at the last shot of the movie, Rocky waves goodbye. And it's kind of like in more ways than one. And then he, he digs me up about eight years later like a zombie. and goes, come on back from the dead. I have a great idea. And what is it? Oh, yeah, well... Um, you're, you get sick and you're falling apart. And I said, no, 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 no. It, because it was just, it was, I, I said, I don't know if we really want to see that ass, that side. I mean, it was, everyone's sort of happy at the end of the movie. I said, I don't know. This is, so um, the idea that uh, he wanted to propose, I thought, okay, sickness. Well, how about if the neighbor gets sick and Rocky, or maybe Burt Young gets sick? <laughs> I'll take care of you. I said, I don't know if I could do it. But anyway, uh, I said no, and I passed. And, I, and then he went out and made Fruitvale Station. And then he came back. And to his credit and his tenacity that he was offered many, many films, and he still came back to do this creed, which is sort of a, a love letter to his father and, and a sense of respect and, and, and a rite of passage, if, you, if you, so be it. And I thought, you know, this is... This is really extraordinary enthusiasm, and, and 
And I just felt that he could do it. You know, he just, he brought a, a worldliness. He brought a, a, a kind of a sense. He, he understood the streets. He had enthusiasm and, and he was very authentic. He's just authentic as a human being. And he just delivered. And what did you think about it when he first told you he wanted to do, you know, Rocky, but from the, the story of Apollo Creed? Said? Honestly, it was like, cool. Yeah. And then we went and started shooting Fruitville. It was, it was literally <laughs> that quick. It was like, one thing with Ryan is once you get to know him and, you know, um, you know, you become as close as, as we have over the years, you just trust him. You know, he get, he has a certain, certain sense of calm to him, especially as a director, as a quality that you really you really look for, you know, um, as an actor, is like that, that, that trust, you know, and that chemistry, and it's something that we got. So he wouldn't ask me to do anything that he didn't think was in my best interest. So the fact that he asked, I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. And then so we went and shot that, and then we started focusing on Adonis and just really, like, you know, layering that character and figuring out who he is and his wants and, you know, what does he need, what is he looking for, what does he have, and, you know, just, like, doing some character breakdown and stuff like that. Then the weight of Rocky and, you know, Sly and, you know, just the legacy and 40 years of just, you know, of, of these characters being alive and stepping into that world, that's when it kind of really, you know, it started to, you know, hit me a little bit. But uh, after I met Sly, it was like, you know, it was like meeting one of my uncles, honestly. It was like walking in there, we're talking about football and sports, and he starts play fighting, and he's wrestling. He's he, he still got some strength to him, okay? He's, <laughs> he still got it, man. So we started messing around and started talking, and it was just instant chemistry, man. It was just like, you know, like I've known this guy, you know, for, for years. And then uh, by the time we started filming, it was like, you know, we, we had that chemistry. It was locked down. I just really love Fruitville Station, so Ryan was somebody that I remember after seeing that movie, I sent an email and made a phone call, and I was like, just make sure that you know what this what this guy's doing next. Um, and then I met him at Sundance really briefly, but I was there with a film called Dear White People, and I didn't know what he was there for at the time, but I guess he was writing Creed. I was, was there to watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so we met and had a, a really kind of brief exchange, but... It was after meeting him, I guess in the same way that you talk about with Sly, like you meet someone and you're like, I thought I really wanted to work with you and now I really want to work with you. Um, there's just something about, I, and I watched him for a while in the party, lots of people were kind of coming up to him and he just had a real way of being very focused when he's speaking to somebody um, that I thought was really unique and special and, and I felt like would make for a really good director. So... So then I just really kind of chased the project, keeping... And I didn't know it was a Rocky movie. I had no idea what it was. Really? No, not at all. Because I, I, I had seen the movies, but it, it, I wasn't enough versed in the world that I thought immediately Creed. I was like, the band? Like, I didn't know what... You know, <laughs> I had no idea what was happening. I was just like, I know he's making the movie, so I just want... I don't know. I just want to be in it. Um, and, then, and then when I knew that Mike was involved... <laughs> Um, I just thought they had such a, she a special... She really wanted to be in the movie. Not because of you. <laughs> be because I thought that they had such a, a, a really fantastic collaboration. Yeah. You know, Mike is someone that's been working a long time and is very gifted, but I feel like what he was able to do in Fruitville is because he was able to do it with somebody that he just really trusted. And, you know, um, so... I just kind of kept it on my radar, and then when I had the chance to come in and read with Mike, we did like a chemistry test, and those things are always awkward because you're like, I don't, don't, I hope we have chemistry, um, but we did. We we cool. you know we were we we liked each yes, other from you do. A, well, <laughs> you know I think we we have a tremendous <laughs> amount of respect for each other as actors, but yeah, you. It's a she had to sing like um, all that all the all the music. We knew we wanted to had an actress you know pull it off, and um. And Tessa came in and, and 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 crushed the acting like like we knew like we knew she would and then you know she she's also a musician herself so um so I mean it was just it was just perfect and then like right after you right after you got cast she I, I, I like called her and I was like all right great so so we, we making this and she's like yeah let's do it so I'm like all right go meet my composer he's like at this address because you got to make like ten songs <laughs> <laughs> so then she and then she was like cool you know so she so they went and um and, and knocked it out. But uh, we were really, really fortunate to have her, man, because like, because she really had her, really, really had her, her her work cut out, you know, in many ways. You know, Tessa's from, you know, she's from Los Angeles. You know, she had to play this character who had grew up in Philadelphia, a very specific place her whole life, and you kind of had to buy her as this, you know, as this, as a, as this woman um, from this environment, and um, and it was just, you know, I don't think anybody else could have could have done what she did. 
it's it's amazing when you, when you just spend a lot of time and, you, and then you really uh, investigate what it's like to actually not put on makeup and and and, and assume the physicality or the pain or the kind of like the mortality of, of someone who knows the imminent end is just around the corner. But you start to look at people that are really sick and you go, my God, this isn't makeup. This is their life. And you start to flow with that a little bit and you begin to uh, identify and empathize. And then there's a sense of resolve, like, okay, this is this is my fate in life. How do you handle your demise? Do you go kicking and screaming or do you accept it? And I think a lot of it has to do with what have you lost in your life? What are you living for? If everything you're living for is gone, then maybe death isn't so bad. You know, maybe that's a welcome uh, reprise. And so all these different uh, uh, formulas would be you know, conjured up and play this one, play that one. But the main thing is uh, I really believe the director sets the tone. And he's he's very investigative. He's also he he speculates and he'll take chances and he'll let the camera roll and he'll improvise and then we'll go back to the script and then eventually you'll find the truth because you don't stagnate. You just keep moving it around and uh, that is probably something that you, it's a gift you're born with to to be a conductor. It's one thing to be a soloist, but he's a conductor. And when people say, well, wh- <laughs> why didn't you act like this years ago? I said, well, you know, it's when you have a certain director and a certain time in your life and it all comes together, yeah, it's very rare that you get those opportunities. So I thank you, young man, for being born. <laughs> My goodness. Thank God you came along. 